Hello and welcome to lecture 6 of ECE 113. Uh, we will be talking about resonance circuits. Right? And this is actually a direct application of uh, your RF components, or sorry, components at RF rather. How do we use them in creating frequency selectivity? First, let's go, uh, let's discuss the concept of resonance. It occurs when the uh, you're able to store uh, and transfer energy between two modes of storage. Right? A basic oscillatory system is defined by the output of the fun of the <clears throat> characteristic equation, as you can see right here. And the general solution to this oscillating function is a sinusoid, so cosine and sine. In communications, a resonance actually plays an important role of the majority of our communication blocks and our filters, oscillators, frequency meters, tuned amplifiers, all of them actually is used in our communication system. And uh, the behavior of the circuit, depending on the values of your resistance, capacitance, inductance, and even the wires, create your effect of resonance. And uh, how does it work? Uh, we have a thought experiment here. Try to play a 110 hertz tone from your guitar string or from your phone and then uh, place it near a guitar string and observe the second string from the top. You will see that this string will actually vibrate even if you don't pluck it. You just need to, uh, you just need to move your phone closer that's playing a 110 hertz tone to your guitar string. And this is the concept of resonance. Your string is resonating with the vibration from the air and uh, it wiggles because it's absorbing the energy that is being transmitted over the air. And this is how resonance works. Electromagnetic resonance occur, occurs rather when you have a capacitor and inductor transferring energy from one another. Okay? So, assuming we have an inductor connected to a capacitor, and let's say the capacitor is fully charged, has a voltage V. So, you have a voltage here. This will drive current into the inductor. Firstly, mostly of all, uh, energy is stored in the electric field of our capacitor. The field will be uh, transferred from electric field, it will be converted to a magnetic field and then vice versa. So again, it will be transferred back to an electric field. However, this case is ideal. Uh, in reality, non-zero resistance actually consume power that is stored in a circuit. This is called damping. As you remember, the wires right here exhibit some form of non-zero resistance. And this resistance actually converts current that's passing through it back to heat. And eventually, the energy inside our circuit will be dissipated. In the presence of dampers, our characteristic equation will now look like this. Okay. And generally, we have a uh, two two uh, types of resonance circuits in uh, use of uh, for our communication systems. One is the series RLC circuit, basically by the name. It's just a series resistor, inductor, and capacitor. So to analyze this, let's look at the impedance seen by the source. It's equal to, you just add their, their impedances, and we view the complex power. Since we were talking about the energy stored, the perfect way to view resonance is through the energy dissipated or consumed by your RLC circuit, and you get this equation for your complex power. Okay? So, let's break that down. The first term is the energy dissipated by the resistor, that is your I squared R. The last two terms would be, the one would be the capacitor, it's right here, with the C. And the other one, for the energy stored in the inductor, you have this. 
So you view resonance in terms of storage and loss. At resonance, as I've shown you earlier, the maximum energy stored in a capacitor is equal to the maximum energy stored in an inductor. So at resonance, basically, this will be equal to this. Your inductor should be equal to your capacitor. The energy, at least. So from there, we can actually solve the frequency at resonance. The frequency at resonance will actually be equal to 1 over square root of LC, and you have seen this before. If we substitute this with the impedance, it is seen that our input impedance will be just equal to the resistance of the circuit. So the behavior of a series RLC circuit at resonance, this becomes a short circuit at resonance. Other than that, it means that the impedance is greater than what is the greater than the impedance of resonance. Basically, at resonance, your series RLC circuit will have a minimum uh, impedance. Right? And you can view it from this graph. So the center right here is your resonant frequency. And as you go further away from the resonant frequency, your impedance will increase. So now let's define the quality factor of the circuit or circuit Q. So uh, basically the Q uh, factor or parameter is used to quantify the selectivity of the circuit. So the greater the Q, that means greater selectivity. Right? And Q is equal to this equation right here. 2 pi multiplied by the maximum energy stored divided by the maximum the energy lost. So let's break that down. For series RLC, it looks like this. So series RLC, it's just basically 2 pi multiplied to the maximum energy stored, could be your electric or magnetic field, divided by PR over F0. This is the energy dissipated over one period. This is the energy dissipated over one period. Then if you substitute the values of this from our analysis earlier, you can find out that the quality factor of your series RLC circuit is actually equal to this the reactance of the capacitance at resonance or the reactance of the inductance at resonance divided by the resistance R. Generally then, the behavior of our series RLC circuit is that if we increase the resistance, that just means we decrease our selectivity. That's it. So you, at increasing resistance, your... Uh, response would be would have a wider bandwidth. Okay? If we change the capacitance, your omega is zero. Okay? Sorry, omega is not zero. Your omega zero rather would decrease and the selectivity of the circuit would increase. Increasing L does the opposite effect. It's the same that your resonant frequency will decrease but your selectivity will actually increase. The dual of your series RLC circuit would be the parallel RLC circuit. So as the name suggests, it's just a resistor, inductor, and capacitor in parallel. And since they are in parallel, it is actually easier to analyze them using the admittance. The total admittance would be equal to this equation right here. And with that, we can solve for the complex power. So it's this one in terms of the voltage in this case. Since they, have, since they have the same voltage, then we'll use the voltage as our common point. And the complex power will now be equal to this equation right here, which can be again broken down. This is the energy lost, energy stored in the inductor, energy stored in the capacitor. You have this one. So this, this, and this. And we'll perform the same analysis from our series RLC circuit to our parallel RLC circuit at resonance, again, the condition stays the same. The total energy stored in the magnetic field should be equal to the total energy stored at the electric field at resonance. And then it uh, follows that it's actually still the same. All right. We substitute this with the admittance and... You'll find out that the 
admittance is equal to 1 over r, or the impedance is basically still the same, equal to r. But since this is a parallel circuit, what happens at resonance is this parallel LNC would actually be open. So if they're open, then the only component that will matter is your resistor. Okay? And uh, as you actually move away from resonance, the impedance will decrease, as is the behavior of your parallel components. Okay? And again, we'll look at the quality factor. So it's still the same definition. So energy stored over energy loss times 2 pi. And uh, you'll see that the quality factor of your parallel RLC circuit is the reciprocal of the quality factor of your, uh, of, of your series RLC circuit. So that means if you decrease R, you actually increase the selectivity of your circuit. Increasing C would have the opposite effect. Your Q factor will actually increase. Increasing L op also opposite the effect of its RLC, series RLC counterpart, and it will increase Q. Okay. So that is your uh, inductance. Okay. And that is your C uh, parallel RLC circuit. And actually... Okay? They are duals of each other. So uh, they complement the properties of each other. That's what I am saying. The applications of these uh, two circuits, uh, since they selectively pass a certain frequency, the application would be filters, mostly. Filters to clean up the signal. We want to delete all the spurious signals. Okay? We use them for that. Okay, and uh, the types of circuits would be low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop. And to characterize filters, actually, we use a number of parameters. First and foremost, the insertion loss. How much power is lost when we are using that filter? That's the insertion loss. Next is the ripple. At the pass band, Okay. You have some form of maximum and a minimum. The maximum minus the minimum, that is equal to the ripple of your response. It's the measure of flatness of the passband. Okay. The bandwidth, commonly known as a 3 dB bandwidth. There you go. You just find uh, three, the point, 3 decibels down from the maximum of your passband. 3 decibels down, you find those frequency points. Okay. Define them, F2 and F1. And the bandwidth will become F2 minus F1. Fractional bandwidth is bandwidth divided by the center frequency. Okay. And the center frequency is basically, well, it's the center. So it's F2 minus F1 over Fc. And the circuit quality factor is 1 over the fractional bandwidth. Or basically, your center frequency divided by the 3 dB bandwidth. Shape factor is the measure of the steepness of the skirts of a resonance circuit. It should not be used, uh, should not be represented by Q. So you first find the 60 dB bandwidth of your circuit, or your uh, filter rather, right? and uh, get the difference of the frequencies. Divide that by the 3 dB bandwidth, and it measures how steep the slope of your uh, transition band is. The ultimate attenuation is basically the minimum attenuation outside the main lobe of your filter. And that's it. All right. So let's consider different combinations of our basic circuit components. You have already seen this from your uh, lower courses, from the lower courses, from the courses you took before you took this course. The low pass filter is an L in series with R. So let's say this is the load resistance. There we, we can only change this component right here. If we use an inductor, we have a low pass filter. So 
we are interested in its 3 dB cutoff point, it does not have any bandwidth or center frequency because it's just a low pass filter. So to get the 3 dB cutoff point, that is the point when this the magnitude of this in linear form is equal to 1 over square root of 2. And uh, that is the case when your uh, angular frequency is equal to r divided by L. For a high pass filter, you change your inductor to a capacitor. So again, you cannot change the resistor because it's modeled as the load resistance. The high pass filter, uh, 3 dB point, again, this, the one inside in linear form, should be equal to 1 over square root of 2. And then you get your 3 dB uh, frequency would be 1 divided by RC. Now, the interesting part is, let's look at the uh, band pass filter. That is an L and C in series before your load resistance. The 3 dB cutoff point is, again, when this is equal to 1 over square root of 2. And in that case, you'll get this equation right here. At resonance, this uh, thing inside is equal to 1. And at, if that is the case, then you'll get this equation. So the 3 dB cutoff points can now be solved. It's a quadratic equation, as you can see here. If you multiply omega 3 dB, both sides of the equation, you'll get a quadratic equation. All right? And then, if you uh, get the 3 dB bandwidth, right, you'll get this value right here. Okay? And uh, the fractional bandwidth is equal to this. The resonant frequency is the geometric mean of the 3 dB points. So you multiply uh, the plus and the minus component together, okay, and get the square root, you get the resonant frequency. Okay? Quality factor is defined as 1 over the fractional bandwidth or basically this omega naught L divided by R. This is actually, this should be familiar. It's equal to the reactance of L divided by R. And that's what we predicted earlier. Right? Just to compare the different filter responses, you get this. The high pass is green, low pass is red, and the blue one is your band pass filter. So now let's consider the effect of non-idealities. So uh, as we have discussed in the previous lecture, Components at RF can be unpredictable in uh, components at RF can be unpredictable, but the most notorious of them all is the inductor. And with the inductor, we have a lossy resistance component. So we model it as a series resistance. Okay? What would happen to the selectivity of this circuit? because of all these factors. The practical selectivity or Q factor of this circuit depends mostly on the source, load, and the lossy resistance. First, let's look at the effect of the source resistance. Consider the case when you have an open load and no lossy resistance from the inductor. Our Q factor will only be solely defined by RS. This CNL will be fixed depending on F0. So we can't really move that. So it all depends on RS. So if we want the circuit to be selective, we just increase the source resistance. But you can't easily manipulate the source resistance, mainly because it's the source resistance. It came from a previous block, maybe an antenna. How do you manipulate that? You can't. Okay? The Q factor can be uh, actually further degraded down by the load resistance, as you see here. Okay. The total parallel resistance seen by this LC circuit, if we have a short circuit right here, the total parallel resistance seen by this LNC, so if we short this out, you'll see that the total resistance seen by this is RS parallel to RL. And that actually reduces the resistance seen 
since it's a parallel connection, the total resistance is less than what you have here. That means you have less R, less quality factor. That's a consequence of connecting your source and load resistance together. And finally, what will be the effect of this lossy component of your inductor? Okay. Before we go there, uh, first let us know how to convert this series reactive component and a series resistance to a parallel resistance and reactive component. Okay. To actually derive this, first, you need to let this Zs right here, is let that be equal to 1 over Ys. Okay? And this 1 over Ys right here, that Ys, since it's a parallel connection, that is equal to some Rp plus, sorry, not Rp, more like 1 over Rp. There you go. Minus 1 over Jxp. Okay. So, you get that. And since Zs is equal to Rs plus Jxs. Okay. If we get the reciprocal of this, 1 over Rs plus Jxs. That will be equal to this expression right here. And you now solve for Rp and Xp. You can now get the parallel uh, conversion of this series uh, combination right here. And uh, that is equal to this. Take note, the Q right here, Qp, is the quality factor when the components are in parallel. And Qs is... The quality factor when the components are in series. Okay? And with that, you can now convert your uh, parallel circuit into series circuit and vice versa. With that, the, effectively, you have some inductance right here and some parallel resistance that is actually... Okay? Let me just draw that. If we convert this to that, then this circuit will become some source, a resistor, a parallel inductor, a parallel uh, capacitor, your new R loss resistance, and the load resistance right here. Sorry for the crappy drawing, but uh, yeah. Okay. So, this is your RL, RS, and as you see here, your LNC will actually see a different parallel resistance, further reducing the actual or the resistance seen by LNC. So, the resistance seen by LNC is reduced, therefore, your Q factor will be degraded further. Circuit Q factor. Okay? To actually avoid that, we will use impedance transformation. Okay? By using an impedance transformer, we can actually increase RS. Okay? We can increase RS such that it will become larger as seen by the LNC circuit. It will become larger in uh, as seen by A and B. How do we do that? We use two reactive components to quote unquote amplify okay, amplify our resistance. This uh, circuit seen at A and B will have some equivalent circuit that becomes some RS and then your total reactance right here. How do you do that? How do we solve this conversion? First, you, uh, you will uh, convert this RS that is in parallel with X1. You first convert that to a series connection. And that is what happened here. So we already know the series and parallel conversion of this. So since they're in parallel, 
we make we uh, we make them in series. They should be R sub T. And they should be X sub T. Okay? So this RT and XT and X2. The total impedance seen by A and B is just the series of these three. So that is what you have here. Okay? So the total impedance will now be equal to this. And let's define the quality factor of this series circuit right here. Basically, that's just the impedance here divided by, sorry, the reactance divided by the resistance. You get this equation. Okay? And we can approximate that if Q1 squared is much, much greater than 1, this X2 over RS right here will actually be insignificant and you will just be left with this expression for your Q factor and now with that Q factor we'll be using that Q factor to convert the series RS and XT to your parallel uh, combination that you see here a single parallel combination turns out that the series resistance will be amplified by your X2 and X1 okay? by a factor of this squared, approximately at least, and your XT will be just approximately the sum of the two, X1 and X2. And this is only the case when both of your quality factors are much, much greater than 1. I'd say about around 10. So now let's look at how the circuit behaves. How does it perform? So power dissipated by the non-ideal elements, some of the elements will consume the power that is that you are injecting. Okay. First consider the ideal case. At resonance, your LNC will be open. So the power will be distributed over the source resistance and the load resistance, achieving a maximum output voltage of one half the input voltage since there are lossy elements we can model them as the total r sub p the lossy elements will be introduced and the voltage output right here will actually be less than what is expected the insertion loss is basically the voltage that you get the output voltage that you get divided by one half the expected output voltage resulting into this expression right here. Okay. Finally, our resonance circuits are actually, actually have a problem in terms of rejection. So uh, one resonance circuit may not be enough to meet the response that we need. So remember that the response of resonance circuits is not that steep. It's around 20 decibels per decade. So if you do, if you plot its body plot, you will see that it's actually 20 decibels per decade right here. So what do we do? We couple two resonance circuits together to increase this rejection of our circuit. So we can use what we call a capacitive coupling to do that. So we have two resonance circuits. We use a coupling capacitor so that they won't interfere with each other. Okay? And the critical coupling condition is when your capacitive coupling is equal to C over Q. Okay? Which results into this quality factor. Your quality factor may be reduced, but your rejection okay, will be improved. Even though at frequencies higher than your resonant frequency, your slope is still around 20 dB per decade. The, at the frequencies that are lower, your slope is actually steeper by a factor of 3. And that's good. So if you have very uh, nasty signals in uh, the lower portion, you can use this capacitive coupling to uh, significantly reduce them with this slope right here. Of course, if we can use a capacitor for coupling, we can also use an inductor for coupling. So uh, different types would be your top L con inductive coupling, or we can use a transformer to magnetically couple, uh, couple to magnetically magnetically couple our 
to uh, circuits. In this one, we'll just focus on top L. Top L is just basically changing your coupling capacitor to coupling inductor. And uh, they have the same conditions actually. At critical coupling, your uh, inductor should have this value, which results into a critical coupling in the solid black line right here. Okay. Solid black line, even at the uh, frequencies lower, you have a, uh, not that steep of a slope, but any frequencies that are higher, you have a very steep slope, okay? just the opposite of your capacitor or capacitive coupling. Okay? And that's the end of this lecture. Again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, if you have any questions first, do not hesitate to leave a comment below. I, uh, you can ask any question that you want regarding this topic, topic of course. Uh, thank you for listening. I'll see you next meeting. Bye!